let us talk today about online reputation or how not to be a troll. I named it in sort of a BuzzFeed style with the, the awesome lecture name because I wanted to get really close attention paid to the idea of online reputation. We discussed how it was created yesterday. Today we're going to talk about what you do with it and how you build your own personal existence on the internet and what your responsibilities are. So we're going to talk about creation, publicizing, and following up because those are the three key elements of building a self on the internet that people can come to learn, okay? One of the biggest challenges that I've got, especially with college students, is getting across the idea that demonstrating that you have learned something by providing certifications or proof of classes attended is not sufficient anymore in today's environment for getting jobs, for getting hired, for getting people to come after you to hire you. And this is a general lesson on basically anything in technology about the specific kind of culture that goes into creating the you that you put out there on the internet so that people will hire you. I'm always going to be focusing on your careers and on you being able to get yourself set up and make some money. And the reason why is that's your first need in technology, right? This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You don't need personal branding until you've got a job because then you have a way to pay your rent. I, I have a lot of, of focus on making sure that you've got a way to pay your rent, although you're going to hear a lot of people tell you on the internet that if you do what you love, the money will follow. It's been my experience that if you do what you're good at and get paid at it and develop proficiencies on the side, that you can transition over time into multiple different great, wonderful careers that are also lucrative. It is wonderful to think that if everyone just did what they loved, that we would all be able to make a lot of money. But you do not see me right now at home embroidering and playing World of Warcraft, right? So, I, I mean, I would love if I could just get paid to, you know, pet my cat and watch Jessica Jones all day long. So if they would make like 7,000 of those, that would be swell. Um, you can't always do what you love, but you can always do what you're good at, okay? So this is going to be about creating something that you're good at. Throw some hands up and let me know some of the things in technology or just kind of in general as a professional that you're good at. What's that? Photoshopping. Photoshopping. That is a killer skill, by the way. Uh, if you understand what people want and you can translate well Photoshop to whatever image they actually want, you can make really good money really fast as a freelancer taking, up, taking jobs. If you're skilled at it, you can jump on sites like Upwork or Freelancer.com. And Freelancer.com is, is a good site for that. And if you want help specifically getting onto that site, let me know because I've got a buddy that can get you some credits for it um, and some help getting into it. What else are folks good at? Copywriting. What's that? Copywriting. Copywriting. That is also a killer skill. It is, a, it is sometimes a little bit of a drudge to do that. So if you can transition copywriting into content creation, then you're in a situation where you're currently being paid to do something that, that you can do and then you transition over into a, a content creation professional. Then you become someone that companies reach out to to say, will you write um, half blog post, half press release, half social media bait blog posts for us? And if you understand how to create something like that, you're a very valuable human being, especially if you don't sound like spam. Okay? That's an awesome one. What else are folks good at? Yes? What's that? Testing games. Testing games. Games testing. Now that is a killer skill. I never really was a, I, I don't particularly like testing games because it bugs me to, to do the same thing again and again and again. But if you find um, relaxation and sort of like this Zen meditation and going back over something again and again and looking for tiny variations on it or what does and doesn't need to get fixed, that's a great job to have. Web testing is a similar one to that, but games testing is a fascinating one to go into if you have kind of that Zen mentality and you like to sink into your work. Do you think it's easier to do that if you have OCD? What's that? OCD? Yes. Um, I will hesitate to pass judgment on what careers are and are not good for people with various and sundry um, neuroatypicalities. So. Then absolutely go for it. Do it. If, it is, if it's going to be the kind of thing that makes you happy, go for it. Um, don't always choose the thing that makes you comfortable. Choose the thing that you're good at, especially something that gives you the freedom to pursue the things that you also want to do and could be good at. Make money, then get what you want. Yeah. So first of all, pay your rent. Eat, right? 
I, I have been there and I've had a lot of people tell me, just do what you love and the money will follow. Bullshit, the money doesn't follow. The money follows when you do point number two, which is publicizing what you've created and figured out what you're good at, okay? So the next part of this is publicizing it. How do you publicize, for instance, copy editing? How do you make that be something that people know that you can do? Mm -hmm. and, um, um, how do you, so what did you say you've been doing, how have you been trying to publicize it? I have business cards that I hand business out. Business cards, okay. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. And I write for a magazine online, so I try to just post every single thing that I okay. write. Okay. That helps. All right. What's the magazine thing? I don't know. Is that fake? But I feel like you could probably ask on random and find out. Yes. Okay. So, how how have other folks publicized what they're doing? Business cards, social media. What else? Creating your own website. Creating your own website. Awesome. Awesome how thing to do. Portfolio? What's that? Portfolio. portfolio. Send me the same thing as having a website, but maybe not if you're in certain kinds of creative endeavors. Like if you yeah. are specifically going for Photoshop, you put a portfolio up on DeviantArt. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you go to put that portfolio up, especially if you do any creative work, mashing up of images and stuff like that. If you like creating stock imagery, for instance, you know, fantastic images, wallpaper, things like that, you can do a really good job doing um, royalty-based images and sales of images. If it's very inexpensive, but 10,000 people download it, you're doing pretty good, right? All right, so that is a great way to do it. Make sure you've got a portfolio and a website up. Website, portfolio, business cards, social media, how else? <coughs> Ads in the newspaper. Yeah, no. no. However, the update to that is ads on Twitter and ads on Facebook or Google ads. Several people that are part of um, content creation and management schemes like to do things like advertise to a specific demographic on Google ads. Okay? And the reason that they do that is they can find the right people to look at what they're doing. Um, I, I remember there was a story about someone who was a, um, right, he was an SEO and a marketing manager in New York City. And what he did was he paid, top dollar actually, to have a result for um, SEO professional New York be the top, uh, the top ad on Google, the top search result on Google. And as a result, when people looking for SEO pro New York searched that term, his was the name that came up at the very top. And it demonstrated to them not just, his, his resume was the link that they hit, right? So it demonstrated to them not just that he was interesting and creative, but that he understood how the system worked. So that is a great way to do it and how to take it. It's not newspaper ads, it's Google ads now. You're going to be doing online ads, plus way cheaper, right? You can target a lot more specifically with online ads, and it's a great way to promote yourself. If you have a specific value on leads, then you're going to do great. If, you're, if for instance... Uh, the typical value of your contract for someone is like a thousand dollars and you spend a dollar a lead and one out of every 70 leads turns into a thousand dollar contract then you're doing great right that's that's great ROI alright so 10% uh, marketing budget on freelance contracting with guaranteed return that is awesome do that a lot if you can do that um, so we've got online advertising and then what did you have to say what's next charity work charity work I love that answer. I love that answer. There's two reasons why I love charity work as a way to publicize what you're doing. Okay, three, and the third one's altruism, and I, you know, I have to tack that on, right? So, but not altruism. There's two really big reasons I love doing that. First of all, um, the it is very common for employers to have a no moonlighting or an intellectual property agreement clause in your contracts. So if you get hired, for instance, as a game tester at a lot of the, the studios around town, they'll have something that says you can't work for another company while you work for us. Or if you develop code, whether you're on your own machine, on your own time, during the term of this agreement, everything you do belongs to us. And here's the way around that. The way around that is to tell your boss, I want a, a, an exception to this rule, just send it to me in an email or something like that, that says that I can develop code free for the ACLU on my own time on my own boxes or the EFF, or uh, the Humane Society. I don't know, some charity that's got kittens and puppies, right? And who's going to say no to that? And then it lets you get your portfolio out there. You get a chance to work on what you love doing, developing code. You get a chance to help a great cause, 
and it's really hard for people who have no moonlighting clauses to turn you down to do fluffy kitten charity work, right? And you're all gonna, you're, very few of you are gonna have a lot of power when you first sign your first tech contracts. You're gonna be like, yes, I will sign this because in your first gig, you know, you're, you're gonna be one of 10,000 game testers that apply and when you get through and you get the job, you will say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and you will sign the contract. There's very little wiggle room there unless there's something seriously abusive in your contract. If you can push back a little bit, that's good. Um, but it's really when you get to the kind of mid-market, you're at web developer, you're at programmer level, then you can start pushing back a lot because it's very difficult to hire programmers. When you advertise game test positions open, they can, they can fill it like fodder. It's a great way to get a, a foot on the ladder and jump up. In fact, I usually advise people that web testing and game dev testing are really great ways to get into technology if you've got an, a, not a lot of educational skill set, right? So that's a, that's a wonderful way to do it. And the second reason I love that is because when people come and look at you, they will see that you've been doing that charity work, which is always a great thing to first have on your resume. And second of all, you'll pick a charity that you're actually interested in, right? Which means that you're gonna have something in common with the people that reach out to you which is a great way to start a conversational ball rolling. And then there's all that, you know, actually doing good thing. That's great, whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've seen a couple of uh, random fire alarms go off recently, and one went off in a movie theater I was in the other night, which kind of freaked me out a little bit. How often has it been since you had a fire alarm go off in a movie theater? I was at Pacific Place the other night watching Crimson Peak, which, dude, that's a great movie. Um, and the alarms went off and they were like, the management has decided it would be prudent at this time to evacuate the building. And so I'm like, okay, I believe you. Because I've never had a fire alarm go off in a movie theater at midnight before. Anyway, um, so I'm a little paranoid about flashing bright blue lights coming on in the school right at the moment. And uh, so the charity work, and the next part was, oh yes, there's one final one that I'm waiting for someone to give me. Yes. Nope. That's all social media still. Yes. Dead tree. Yeah. Oh, dead tree media. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really effort heavy for what you're trying to get get done. It's not a bad idea, especially if you've got a. I mean, if you're going to do something like publicize your work as a graphic artist, specifically focused on like musical acts or something like that, that's a great way to do it. But just make sure that your effort is proportional to the benefit that you're gonna get back from that level of advertising. If you are a killer designer who loves to work with bands and you're really into that space, um, you can do that for free for some bands around town. Because every every startup band, I, I can't believe I just called them a startup band, any new band you know, is always desperate for promotion. And if you go to them and be like, hey, here's a great image that I created of you, um, would you like me to just take this and staple it up all over town to have people buy your album? They'll be like, yes, thank you. Right? Um, I will quit making you all suffer. The word I am looking for right now is collaboration. Find other humans that do the thing that you want to do, offer to help them, and learn from them. Help them every chance you get because those are the people who are your absolute direct main line to jobs in every direction. You don't just get a reputation, and you should only do this if you feel able to do quality work responsibly, respectfully, and responsibly. Responsively and responsibly. What is that? Okay. And the reason I tell you this is because groups, like for instance, if for those of you who want to do a, uh, UX UI development, groups are your best pathway to getting targeted by recruiters and hiring managers in the area. Okay? So this is how you publicize who you are as a person and the thing that you want. Always make it easy for people to come and find you. All right, and anyone who needs ideas on stuff like this, just let me know, we'll figure it out, okay? So the last part of this is gonna be follow up. It is very common for people to not follow up on the work that they have done with other people. They don't necessarily, they maybe don't feel comfortable following up, they maybe don't understand how to, but one of the greatest ways that you can publicize your work, <clears throat> that you can create yourself online and be seen as a responsible person and potentially a great colleague is to follow up with other human beings. Part of this is acknowledging that they're people and part of it is, acknowledge, is making them acknowledge that you are a real person. Not a troll, not a pain in the butt, not an anonymous person. There's a time and a place for that just like we discussed yesterday. But the idea is to create a, a human being that people see 
behind the persona that you've created. Does that make sense? This is the value of online reputation. Does that make sense? Following up, understanding how to email the people who you meet at a, at a meetup group, reaching out to those people. That personal contact is the last part. Remember, creation comes from you, comes from what you want to do and the thing that you want to be. Publicizing is about getting your message out to as many people as possible. And following up is about taking those few people who do reach out to you and following back up with them. You want them to constantly be acknowledging that you're a person so that you float to the top of the stack in their minds. All right. You ever seen the, um, the liquid uh, thermometers that have the little bobbers in them with multiple colored liquids, like red and green and blue? And they, what's that? Yes, glass shaped like a syringe. Sometimes uh, barometers look a little bit like that too, but this is specifically a thermometer. Um, if somebody wants to throw up an image of exactly that on random or on general, that would be absolutely awesome. What you want is to have your bubble be the one that floats to the top of the, of the thermometer. You want to be hot all the time, right? You want to make sure that people are thinking about you and seeing you. And the best way to do that is to treat them respectfully when they reach back out to you. There is a small... <clears throat> exception to this rule and the exception to that rule is if someone repeatedly reaches out to you and you can tell that you are part of a mailing list or a group of people that um, is being blasted you don't have to respond past a certain point if a tech recruiter blasts an incorrect job or an inappropriate job at you five times in a row you don't have to respond anymore but when you're getting your career started build that network this way and follow up with people especially for somebody who offers to do you a favor or give you an introduction try to make sure and trade that back to them again this is how you build yourself into not a troll, not a time suck, not a waste of someone else's energy. Be someone who doesn't just know how to do a thing, do the thing. Then make sure that people know that you know how to do the thing. And then when people reach out to you about the thing that you do, reach back out at them. Does that make sense? What questions do you have about this process? This is one of those things where, yes? Um, proofreaders. Proofreaders. That's always a really good skill. Or uh, where can I get a proofreader? Where can you get, so go to freelancer.com, go to upwork.com, any one of the uh, work for hire sites. Fiverr is a really good example of that. And it also be a proofreader for other languages as well. Yes, if you can proofread in multiple languages and you can proofread translations, that's a, a lucrative skill. Not just a useful one, but a pretty lucrative one. I generally spend a lot of time on a lot of these concepts, trying to make sure that you've got not just the technical skill set, but the social skill set to get jobs. Why do you think I do that? More What's that? More opportunities. More opportunities. What does the combination of technical and social skills make you? Rare. <laughs> it makes you rare. <laughs> it makes you someone who's valuable. So if you can focus on being valuable to companies, being valuable to the technical community that you're in, you're going to float to the top of that thermometer. All right? Okay. <clears throat>